Hi, this is Rob again. Um, I decided that I'm only going to make um, two more videos that are part of this magical art series, and that's all I'm going to make. Um, because I think that as I've pointed you along the path, and as I continue to go along the same path myself, um, everything else you need to know, or that you will know as you continue this path, will come to you. It will. Either in the form of a book, the internet, a teacher, um, somebody that you did not expect that will cross your path. Um, everything will come to you in due time as you consciously progress along this path. And I do not need to bring everything to you. But there are a few more things that I'd like to talk about before I close this series. In today's video, I'm going to talk about scrying. Um, scrying is important because it helps you become aware of the greater surrounding that is around you, which in turn, like we talked about yesterday, which is it within you. So scrying is an important part of the magical path because it is a part of the path that helps you to know yourself, inside and out, which are ultimately the same thing. Um, I'm also going to talk about a subject that is important because as you continue, continue down the magical path and you continue in your exercises of concentration, what's going to happen to you is that the energy of your aura, your auric field, is going to become more concentrated. Uh, people who see auras will tell you and um, if you want to look at some auras that you can't see possibly yet in your life, um, you will be able to see them later on. Um, as, you try to, as you try to learn to do that, you will be able to see them. Um, but people who see auras um, through either Corellia photography or through their own intuition will tell you that some people, the average person actually, the average person you know, that goes to work in their cubicle, um, at work in the office and then goes to uh, maybe have a few drinks after work and watches the news and goes to bed and that's their life and they let things happen to them. Their auric field is rather weak. It's there definitely. Um, but it is rather weak. It's not condensed and it's not as bright as somebody along the mystical path who is focusing their mind on concentration, visualization and being aware of the surroundings within them and without them, these practices are going to increase your auric field's vibration. You're going to vibrate at a higher level, and the further you go along the mystical path, the higher your vibration is going to become. And um, you will become, because you are vibrating at a higher level, your intuition is going to increase, because you are going to start to become aware of the higher levels of reality that vibrate at those higher levels that you are now vibrating at. The spectrum of your senses is going to expand. Not necessarily through the five senses, but the sixth sense of intuition. You're going to become more aware of that and it's going to happen to you. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the um, things that you need to be aware of as you go down that path and as your vibration increases. That's another thing I want to talk to you about. Um, but before I begin, I want to share with you an anecdote that's happened to me over the last four days. And um, if I was not down the mystical path, I would have thought, um, I would have thought ten years ago in my life um, that this was just, I was a victim of an accident, a victim of circumstance a victim of my own stupidity and had no idea why this happened to me. Now that I'm conscientious about the things that I think and how those thoughts come out and because of my concentration in those thoughts, um, instinctively I concentrate on them now because I've been practicing. Um, those thoughts come back to me almost immediately sometimes. Um, so this is what happened. About four days ago I was, I took my shower in the morning and uh, I was shaving, and I nicked myself. I was not being present. My mind had was on um, other things. I was thinking in the future about what I was going to do during the day, the things I wanted to accomplish and I had to accomplish. I was not being mindful. In fact, at the moment that I was shaving, I probably was not thinking about even shaving, but I was doing it. And we are often in that state. Um, I have to say, um, as a digression, I think generally I have found, and this is not always true, but men in general tend to be in that state more often than women. 
I've found that women, um, for some reason, are more intuitive, but that's not because they are gifted more or have a, a, a different, more magical aura about them. It's because they are naturally more present and aware of their emotions and such. Men, on the other hand, um, generally speaking, we tend to live in our minds a lot in the past and the future. So the present moment and what we are doing at that instant, we are vaguely aware of nor or conscious of. It's just a habit. It's a habit. We don't even think about it. You go into the shower and I guarantee you, every time you go into the shower and you take either the bar of soap or whatever you do in the shower and you go in there, you're going to shower the exact same way you did the day before. Uh, you're going to take that bar of soap, you're going to just instinctively, you're not even thinking about it. And it's a habit. And because of that, we're not conscious of every moment. And um, I know I'm seriously digressing, but if you've ever watched a, um, um, a samurai, one of the mystical paths is the samurai path. And if you ever watch a samurai master um, and you see the pupil is meditating, and every once in a while that samurai master will slap his back with a stick. Not enough to cause a bruise, but enough to definitely wake him up. Because you know he knows that that person is trying to focus his attention on something, but yet the mind wanders, and he's bringing him back into the present. Um, I was not in the present while I was shaving four days ago, and I nicked myself ever so slightly. But, you know, it would not stop bleeding. It was an inconvenient, and I felt like a dork um, because I got to put some tissue on here, and I'm complaining. I'm saying, why do guys have to shave? And so I'm just complaining, and I'm like, man, you know, and at the time it didn't dawn on me that I wasn't being present. Now, as soon as I nicked myself, I was fully present, but by then it was too late. <laughs> and, um, so the next day, I went into the shower, I did the same thing, I come out, and this time I am a little conscientious of the fact that I cut myself while I'm shaving if I'm not careful. So, um, but I sent out the thought um, that I possibly can cut myself now. And so I'm going to be more aware of it, but I'm going to possibly do it. And that's what I experienced. I, when you send out a thought that says, I can possibly have this happen in my life, it's going to, and you release that, it's going to come back where that can possibly happen. And that's going to be your reality. And I was more mindful than I was the day before. But because I actually went out of my way to think now, I can possibly cut myself. Which was not even what I was thinking the day before. Um, I cut myself even worse, in spite of the fact that I was being more present because I had sent that thought out of possibly cutting myself. And it was very frustrating. And I cut myself right there, like, on my neck. Would not stop bleeding. It was bigger than the cut before, and I was more frustrated. And um, the same thing happened the day after that. Hey, I don't see the cycle sometimes unless I'm being totally aware of my thoughts, and I did the same thing, except for with more energy. I got out of the shower, I dreaded shaving, and I said, you know what, there's a high probability I'm going to cut myself. Because yesterday, I did it and I was trying not to. So no matter how hard I try, I'm going to cut myself. I know it. I sent more energy to that thought now. Because there was a greater intensity of my sending it out. And it came back and I cut myself. And it was bigger than the day before. I cut myself on my neck. Again. Now, luckily I am aware of my thoughts. So I'm seeing this pattern. But at this point, I still am not taking control of my thoughts. This morning, I dreaded getting out of the shower. Um, I actually said out loud, I said, I hate shaving because every time I shave, I cut myself. I said that out loud with energy. And I sent that out. And then I tried to change it and I said, okay, if I am fully mindful of the present moment, I won't do it. I won't do it. And, um, but I didn't send that out with very much emotion. Not as much as I had sent out that thought while I stepped out of the shower that every time I shave, I'm going to cut myself. 